this. This is called tuba, traveling wave uh, parametric amplifier. Let me see how many slides. I have uh, two slides for this. So what is this? This is an amplifier. But it's something, uh, I also don't know well, a, a very complicated math, but it's something that we can try to appreciate. First, let me show you something called parametric amplification. It is not what is used here, right? But I'm going to show you what is used here. But let's imagine I have a capacitor. This capacitor is in a resonator, an LC tank. So its voltage is going to change from positive to negative, positive to negative, a sine wave. Is that okay? Okay. So let's say it is at positive. Okay. At positive, right? At this time, it is positive, And you have charge Q and negative Q here. Now, what if it says positive? I try to pull them apart when it is a positive. Okay, now where is the electric field? Electric field go from here to here, right? From left to right, right? Now I try to pull them apart. Can I pull them apart easily? No, right? Because they are attracting to each other. Remember this capacitor, I don't mean that it is uh, separated by outside. Let's say just you hold two plates together. And when it is a peak voltage, I pull them apart. Basically, I have transferred the energy to this system, right? How much do I transfer? Energy of the capacitor equals to one half Q squared divided by C. So here I have some mistake. I should not put plus voltage. But definitely they are still plus Q because I pull it fast, very fast. Though the electron or the charge cannot move but because they are matter, they take time to move. They cannot move faster than the speed of light. So if I move it really fast, it is still Q and minus Q. Voltage can change, right? But in this process, I need to have a work done on this system, right? Because they have a force. I move them by a distance. Four times, four times distance is the energy I deposit to this system. So what is that energy? Uh, you see that what happened when I pull them apart? The, uh, what is the capacitance? Increase or decrease when I pull them apart? Do you remember when uh, the plate has a further away, capacitance is larger or smaller? Mm -hmm. They need to look at the equation. <laughs> huh. Yes, exactly. Then it decreases, right? Which makes sense because now the energy increases. I have a smaller capacitor but have larger charge, uh, same charge, right? So in this case, the energy will increase. Okay? Now, this is cycle one. Now, then when after I pull it apart, then, because it's oscillating, right, it must go back to zero volt during a certain time. I just wait, right, because it's oscillating. Go, it's a side wave. It was positive V. When it is positive V, I pull it apart so that I gave energy to the system. And then I wait until it's zero V. During zero V, there's no E field right? between the capacitor. So what I'm going to do now, I just quickly put them back. But when I put it back, there's no force because it's zero volt, right? So I do not extract any energy or give any energy to it. So I put it back to this. I need to do it fast. Okay? So no energy exchange. How does it return? I just... I mean, you can think of... Uh, no, you just move you move a little bit, then you don't need too much energy. It's just an inertia, right? Just, I just, Is it like a spring? It's not a spring. You just push it back. Okay. Yeah, just push it back. Move it back without energy. Right? If there's no fiction, yeah. The reason is you may ask me, when this is at peak voltage, I pull it apart, will the Q change? 
you will not because the charge cannot move immediately, right? And I put it really fast, so I still have that much Q at that. And the reason is because they cannot move very fast. I, I mean, then I say at least they cannot move faster than the speed of light. They start trying to leave already or accumulate, but they cannot re react. So maybe that's not a good thing to say, speed of light slower than the speed of light. But that's what I'm trying to say. Matter takes time to respond. But the magnetic field, they can respond right away. They're at the speed of the light, right? Oh, epsilon, the electric constant. Over. The T, the thickness. I mean the distance, right? This is the T. Right, maybe this is T1, this is T2, right? So I put this back to T1, and this is T2, right? So no energy exchange in this case. So this one, then what? 1 and 2 complete half of the oscillation cycle of the LC tank, right? Because this is oscillating. The, the, just in, I did not draw the rest of the circuit. I'm just saying that this capacitor has uh, this sinusoidal signal oscillating. So go from P to zero. And then you will go to the negative, right? I will do the same thing. So you see that I am applying this Parametric, why is called parametric? Because it's a, you're changing the parameter. You, by changing this parameter, you've done the amplification. I'm doing the amplification because I keep pumping energy into there, right? So uh, one and two competes only half of the cycle, right? So my, this energy I'm putting into is the pump energy is two times the omega naught. This one is oscillating at omega naught, let's say one hertz. And I need to put two hertz of pumping, right? I keep need to vibrate the, I need to pull apart and pull back the capacitor at a frequency of two hertz. Then I will be keep pumping energy at the right time into this system. And then that is why it is called a parametric amplifier. Okay. But this is just a type of parametric amplifier. In this quantum traveling wave parametric amplifier, we call it what we call it, it is a type of what we call the quantum limited amplifier. You will see very often if you read the paper, Q, L, A. And in this particular case, it's the tuba, T, W, P, A. Okay, so what is that? Why is called a quantum limited amplifier? It adds minimum noise to the signal. This is the fundamental, fundamental noise. Uh, in this way, when we amplify it, we don't have resistor. So for those who have learned the noise figure or something, right? The resistor, transistor will contribute a lot of noise when you have the amplifier. We don't have resistor, but we still add the noise because of Heisenberg uncertainty principle, right? So for example, uh, in the vacuum, you do, you do have the possibility for adding more noise. Even you don't have photon, right? You still have one half h bar omega energy there, right? Something similar to that, right? But we don't derive the equation, right? So finally, I just show you what happened here uh, in some of the people's circuit. This is like the parametric amplifier. You see that we again have a circulator and then uh, you have two Josephson junction. Right, so here you will form the oscillation frequency 
as a function of floods because this is a squid which we mentioned before briefly or our goal is saying that uh, if you only have a Josephson junction and the capacitor, you form a LC tank, right? The Josephson junction is a long linear inductor. But here we have pair of this so that we can pass through some magnetic flux to adjust its Josephson junction energy or its Josephson junction inductor, inductance, right? And that, that, that's it, right? So this is nothing special. But then you are going to have a pump, okay? Here, just draw it. You have an AC pump. Coupletive, coupled inductively, the pump frequency is two times of the frequency of the res res resonation, okay? And from here, you definitely can see that if I have a signal, this is my signal. This signal through the circular will come here and then get amplified because I have this AC pump. So I do conserve energy. This is the something I keep pumping into here. It helped me to amplify my signal and then it will come back. Again, this is a circulator. Then this is amplified signal we, we won't go too deep I don't know it well neither right but the point is uh, we understand what is parametric amplifier from the point of the capacitors wheel right and if you go to math you will see that this one have a similar property so we have a pump so your frequency need to be two times of this resonator and you fool this uh, circulator, your signal comes in. Originally, your signal just goes straight forward, go out, right? So here, when I draw this figure, it's just a straight forward, right? But in reality, maybe it just depends on the design. You actually have this circulator to bring it to this tuber, and then you come back. So you have smaller signal, larger signal. The main point is that it amplify with the minimum possible noise that you can add to a circuit. Okay, you cannot have any amplifier that does not add noise to your signal just because of the quantum mechanics. Uh, you, yeah. This is uh, the like LC tank type thing. That, that's not the qubit. Right? Not the qubit, not the qubit. Just LC tank, yes. Very good. Okay, so this is 2.5. 